from your hostess with the mostess, Lauren Hines. This is I Did It My Way, the podcast that brings you into the story of leading entrepreneurs and tastemakers. Lori Hartwell, the founder of the Bridal Society, has more than 24 years of experience planning weddings across the country. Her company, Lori Hartwell Events, AKA A Wedding to Remember, earned many awards over the years and has planned weddings for celebrities and other elite clientele. She recently won Most Helpful Mentor at the National Wedding Awards for all the help she gives wedding planners all around the world. Lori has a passion for the wedding industry and believes strongly in continuing education along with raising the standards in the wedding industry. That is why she travels the world presenting this specialized certification course. She and the entire staff at the Bridal Society, also known as TBS, are proud to have a 100% satisfaction rating. In her conference, she talks about weddings from every professional's perspective to ensure that everyone understands each aspect of the planning process and can better serve their couples. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us. This is, uh, of course, Lauren Hines, your hostess for, from I Did It My Way. Um, and we're so excited today to welcome none other than Mrs. Lori Hartwell of the Bridal Society. Welcome, Lori. Thank you. Yeah. I just thank you so much for joining us today. And for those of you who aren't familiar with Bridal Society, you may have heard a little bit on the bio about Lori and about the organization. But Lori, if you wouldn't mind just sharing a little bit about your illustrious organization and even how do you come up with the name the Bridal Society? Well, okay. So the Bridal Society as a whole is a family of wedding planners as well as wedding venue professionals. We've also had DJs and florists and bakers take our conferences in the past. Uh, it is it's back in the olden days um, when I first started planning what you like that um, there weren't really um, a lot of places where it was a safe place to go where wedding professionals especially wedding planners and it were known as you know this is one of the most stressful jobs in America we're actually rated number five there was no support group in in a sense uh, and I was really looking for that. I was looking for other people that were experiencing the same things that I was experiencing, and I couldn't find it. I mean, there were a couple of things out there, but they weren't, um, they, they didn't feel like a, the right match for me. So I wanted a safe place for wedding planners and wedding professionals as a whole to be able to come together and empower each other. I wanted a place where people could raise each other up instead of it feeling like people are kind of tearing each other down. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, sometimes the people equate the wedding industry to like going back to sixth grade. Mm. <laughs> where yeah. uh, and I, you know we just aren't a part of that we want we're kind of an all-inclusive group we have no, it's a no judgment zone uh but what we do is we focus on education so we we go over pretty much every single little teeny tiny detail when it comes to planning weddings in our two-day certification conference and when people hear two days they're like really can you really fit in as much information I, here's what i would say talk to all 3,600 of our members and you ask them if they felt like <laughs> they got a ridiculous amount of conversation. Basically, I talk for 10 hours, two days in a row. We take a six month course and condense it into the two days. And we do that for the other people to be able to fit it into their schedule. Our attendees don't have weeks and months to spend on something like this. They're busy. Right. Uh, they're running they're running businesses, they have other jobs. They need something where they can just get in, get the information and get out. Except we kind of keep the, our hug around them even after they uh, complete their certification conference. So our, the, what makes the Bridal Society, in my opinion, stand out is not only uh, the really amazing people that, uh, you know, that are part of the Bridal Society who go through our program, but it's the fact that we give lifetime free membership as well as uh free continuing education courses every single month so we are constantly just shoving information Mm -hmm. at our members and so that's what makes us different and how i came up with the name um bridal means ceremony it means you know a wedding and then i wanted to create a society 
uh, where people wanted to be. I wanted it to be a safe place. So that's kind of where that name came from. I know my mom had actually helped me come up with the name nice. uh, of the company years ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's very cool. Mama got involved in the process. <laughs> I noticed you said, uh, I wrote down, you keep your hug around them. And I think I noticed that. I mean, at the, the conference is where I saw you speaking. I noticed the hug that you just give you just exude a hug, right? You're just this uh, warm person. And I think not only beyond the warmth and the genuine spirit that you have, you also just uh, create an environment of people who are capable um, at their, in their roles. And uh, I noticed that family, was that, that culture you create within the bridal society of family, was that something, I know you said you wanted to create a safe place. Did you know that it was gonna create this kind of environment, mm -hmm. this type of culture you'd foster? No. Yeah. I had I honestly, I was just talking to a couple of my members uh, yesterday on the phone um, from El Nicole Events, who's, who are up in the D.C. area, mm -hmm. and uh, they're, they're joining a, another one of our committees, and so we were chatting about it, and we were talking about how funny, not really funny, but what amazing, how amazing it is that our members are so loving and caring and, and helpful, and no, so I'll be honest, I didn't really think about the whole thing. Um, I here's here's what I truly believe in my heart. It starts at the top, and it, and whatever that the person at the top believes, feels, exudes, I feel trickles down. So I knew, of course, where I stood on certain subjects. For instance, you know, I, I don't believe in judging any other human being. Mm -hmm. I believe in acceptance of every single person who's on this planet. I believe in hard work, um, high ethics, great morals. I believe in all of that. So I teach a lot of that in my classes and in my youth certification conferences because I don't want, I'll be honest, I don't want the people that are out there that um, would rather talk behind someone else's back or um, cut someone down or try to sabotage another person. I don't even want that person as a member. So to, honestly, if that's how people are, and, and they're like, I don't need a certification because I know everything. Yeah, okay, you stay over there then. Because to me, that's not the kind of uh, member that we're even looking for. We're looking for people who know that there's no such thing as having all the answers and knowing everything that there is to know in an industry. I've been planning weddings. I've been in the industry for 24 years. Wow. I don't know everything. I, that's the beauty of the wedding industry is that it continues to evolve and change with the trends. And so I get to learn new ways and new things all the time. Not to mention that our clients change because they are of a different generation. So every, you know, by five to 10 years, we're dealing with a completely different group of people who communicate in a completely different way. Yeah. So I love being able to learn more about those things, learn more about those different people and evolve myself because, um, the, to, to me, there's not ever going to be a time in my life where I say, well, check it off. I know everything. Right. That's not going to happen. So we have fostered a really special um, unit with among all of our members. Um, and I, I hate even calling them members. They're my family. Um, you know, I like to mentor all of these lovelies. Um, we've got wonderful gentlemen uh, and beautiful and wonderful and talented women um, of all shapes, sizes, colors, religious backgrounds, um, sexual orientations, everything. And we are a unit. And I'm just so grateful for each and every single one of them. And I'm proud of them. Yeah. Well, they work hard and um, people need a place to find genuine love and acceptance. Um, and I think we relate on so many key tenets of our organizations. And um, I had a, one of your members, Casey, of uh, Casey Events. I, she came through. Um, Casey wrote an event, excuse me, came through one of our mixers on Saturday. And she just, every time I meet one of your graduates, one of your members, one of your family members through the Bridal Society, I hear such beautiful, beautiful stories, the beautiful testimonies from the conference. And so it made it very easy for us to open that up to our organization. Uh, because when you find an organization that stands for something and represents it well, and then their people, their fruit is showing after it, it just makes it so much a part that you know so it's part of our extended family and i'm excited to be sitting in your class just to be part of the family um <laughs> and um I, oh, I, just, I might as well plug that right because uh august 19th to the 20th 
Um, Atlanta Wedding Event Professionals will be sitting in with the Bridal Society. We're inviting uh, all of our community members as well as our montage members to sit in. We've gotten a nice rate for it as well. So make sure you go to thebridalsociety.com and enter in the code ATLWEP to save, to see your great savings off of the, off the conference. During the super early spe bird special, there's a great deal going. So there's also the early bird special and of course the registration itself. Um, either way, uh, I know that you guys would be able to benefit hugely from being part of it, whether you're a certified planner or wedding planner already, I know that the Bridal Society is gonna be a great time. Plus it's gonna be at Chateau Alain. I mean, do you really have to sell a two day conference at Chateau Alain Winery? <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> yeah, I think when people saw that in our headline in our email and they're like, oh, Chateau a lot. I'm there. Oh, it's a conference. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, that's a beautiful location and, yeah. and truly I, I, yes it is a it's a long two days I'm not gonna lie to you it's a long two days but we have a blast I mean we laugh and joke and have so much fun the entire two days mm -hmm. that people say gosh I feel like I got there in the morning and all of a sudden it was 6 30 at night right it right. just went too quickly and and they're right it I miss it. Like I, I hate it when the two days are over. So I mean, I'm exhausted, but I hate to. Over. So, um, Laura, you mentioned you've been in the industry. Well, you were planning for twenty odd years. Um, how did you even get your start in the industry? And what was that transition to where you said, "I'm going to create this planning certification course"? Um, you know, was it hard to leave that behind? And how did you even get involved in it overall? I guess that's two separate questions. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, we'll start with the first one. Yeah. I, the first wedding I ever planned, I was 18 years old. So mm -hmm. I graduated high school when I was 17. Um, I was kind of the, the person you go to when you just want to plan an event of some sort. Uh, and back then, you know, this is back in 93. Uh, that's when people got married a lot. Just right after high school, people yeah. would get married. So one of my friends was getting married and she said, Hey, Laura, can you help me plan this wedding? I'm like, Oh yeah, it should, sure. it should be easy. Well, it was, easy. <laughs> it was really <laughs> tough, but I thought, you know, uh, I could do this. I yeah. could do this for a little. Um, sure. So I started planning other events and other weddings for other friends. Um, and it just sort of, you know, I realized, well, I didn't, cause I was either going to be an attorney or a psychologist Mm -hmm. uh, or an event planner. And I honestly, I feel like all three all the time. Yeah, all the time. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, it's interesting, this job. Yeah. And so yeah. I just started thinking I can make this a business. I really kind of, from, from the get go, when I was really young, I knew that I really wasn't the kind of personality. I didn't have the kind of personality that could answer to other people. I wanted to own my own business. I wanted to be my own boss. So I just decided I'm just going to do it. Um, asked my, my dad, I went to my father because he owned a golf company at the time. Like, am I too young? Is 18 too young to start a business, go out on my own? And he said, kid, you're 18 going on 80. You're fine. You've got this. Just <laughs> well, I did. I believed in myself uh, and I, I just went after it. Now, planned many, 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 many weddings for a number of years. And about, I would, gosh, I think it was 2007 when I realized that I need to focus more on education. So uh, I, I approached a number of people and said, I feel like the wedding industry needs a base, a home base, a place where we outline the foundation of what our moral standings are, uh, what our standards should be, and then we can build upon that. And uh, so uh, I noticed, I kind of found myself just transitioning, transitioning into education. Now I kept planning weddings. I never stopped. I mean, until I didn't retire until September 5th of 2015. That was the last oh, wow. wedding that I have um, but it, you know, I'll tell you, I really feel like my calling at that point in time was I need to mentor a bigger group of people. I had a lot of wedding planners. Um, they had a few years experience where they were brand new to the industry and they said, you know, Lori, can you help me through this? Can you tell me what I should be doing, what I shouldn't be doing? And I thought I need to reach people on a bigger scale. Um, because I noticed, and I'm sure a lot of existing wedding planners can 
uh, attest to this is that people would just wake up one morning and think that they're a wedding planner because they read a wedding magazine. Yes. And that is just simply not the case. Yeah. And it's not because, uh, you know, it's rocket science or anything. This is a total, totally doable um, career choice, but you have to have some understanding, some education that goes behind it. You need to have an understanding of who you are, who other people um, try to be or who they actually are. You need to have an understanding as to how to communicate with all the different wedding professionals that are out there. Yeah. You also need to know the order in which everything should be taking place, not to mention how to physically and emotionally handle the stress of this job. There is just a huge amount of information that has to go into it and you can't just become a wedding planner. So what was happening is I noticed that these I'll call them pop-ups, uh, people that just read a magazine, now I'm a wedding planner, or they just watched a movie, and so that means they're automatically a planner. Um, <laughs> it's scary, I'll not, I'll not lie to you. Um, they probably saw Jennifer Lopez plan the wedding, like, I can do this too. <laughs> yeah. With a little water spritzer, and then I'm good. No, yeah, yeah. You, need, you need, there's so much more. People have no idea how hard this job is. This yeah. is number five of the hardest jobs in America, the toughest, the most stressful. And let me tell you, it's accurate. It is accurate. Mm -hmm. So I was, I wanted to make sure that those who were interested, I love, I love hearing stories like, Hey, I watched a movie and I was inspired. I think this might be the direction I want to go. Those are the people that I say, get in my class. Mm -hmm. I'll tell, Cause I never coat a single thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I tell it exactly the way it is. Because I don't want anyone thinking, oh, we're just going to go buy some flowers and we're going to pick out dresses. No, yeah. that's not at all what this has to do with. So it's so much more difficult. And that's why um, I love hearing great inspirational stories, but get educated. Mm -hmm. And so that's I, my mission in life is not only to help those who want to get in the industry and let me just, you know, insert some realism into them. Right. But also... I want to raise the standards in the wedding industry. I was tired of seeing DJs drink on the job. I was tired of seeing um, photographers. Um, well, you can't even really call them professional photographers because these people were just like a cousin of the couple who bought, had happened to go to Best Buy and bought a brand new camera. And they automatically thought, oh, well, I'm a photographer now. I can do your wedding because how hard can it be? Yeah. It's really hard because there are no second chances. You can't say, oh, gosh, you know what? I didn't get that shot. Can you guys redo the first kiss? Hey everyone, hope you've been enjoying this episode of I Did It My Way. I'm Lauren Hines, your hostess. And at this point, we wanted to encourage you all to let us know if you have a business or you have a project that you're pushing forward. We would love to welcome you as a sponsor for I Did It My Way. In addition, we're here in the local Georgia area, so we have other opportunities if you are interested in being able to expand your business here in Atlanta, the metro Atlanta area, or if you are local to here. Uh, we want to encourage you to reach out and find out some opportunities available through the I Did It My Way sponsorship program, as well as uh, some on-the-ground activities that we do through Atlanta Wedding and Event Professionals Network throughout the year. We have dozens of uh, opportunities for you to be able to uh, partner with us for more than simply the podcast, which of course will reach our, our audience, but also of course if you want more live on the ground visibility as well um, in the more high touch capacity, we're happy to be able to introduce some of those opportunities to you too. More so, we just love partnering with other vibrant entrepreneurs who are creating their stories every single day. And so help us along you, our journey and we'll help you along yours as you consider partnering with us for I Did It My Way as a sponsor and beyond. If you want to reach out to us, you can contact me, Lauren Hines. You can reach out at info, I-N-F-O, at atlantawep.com. Or you can reach out to us by phone at 1-800-316-7816. And we look forward to hearing from you soon. Enjoy the rest of your journey, and we hope you enjoy the rest of this episode. Thanks for checking it out. Um, mm -hmm. No. So yeah. There's... <laughs> You have to do it right the first time, and it has to be so flawless and so smooth that no one even realizes how tough of the job that it was. It yeah. just needs to be seamless and effortless through the entire process. And that, honestly, you need education to figure out how to make that happen. That's so good. Yeah, it's it's funny. Um, it's if you can master being unobtrusive as a planner, as a photographer, as any key element in the workings of a wedding. It's so interesting, though, because you have to be there in the moment, but you can't be seen as easily. You know, if something happens, no one should be able to notice it. But somehow you're right there in the middle of the action, right? And learning that it is a skill. It's interesting how you put it that way. I've never heard it phrased that way, but 
learning how to yeah. teach that. It's, uh, it comes yeah. through experience and from other people who have had the experience to be able to teach it. Yeah. it that is absolutely true. And, and that's another reason why I feel like the Bridal Society is special in the fact that you're guaranteed that a professional wedding planner, someone who has over two decades of experience is actually teaching the conference rather than some online course who right. you have no idea that information together. I, I see some of it and I go, where did they get that information? That's not even accurate. That would never have happened in a real life situation. And so, you know, these other, um, courses that you can take one of the questions that they need to be asking before signing up for those is is an experienced wedding planner actually teaching this conference you know not someone with just five years of experience someone with depth of experience because um you know and i talk a little bit about you know people in business want to take shortcuts they want the instant success uh, and you can't have that kind of success going by you know taking the shortcut you need to have um, you know, you have to take the long road because on that long path, that long road is when you actually gain the experience and you gain the knowledge as to why we do things a certain way, how, what happens. It's like consequence class, really. Right. You know, you just kind of figure out what the process is. And, and I've definitely learned what not to do. I've made my fair share of mistakes, many, many mistakes. Right. And, and I try to, and that's, I bring that element into the conferences so that they know what they shouldn't do because I did them and it didn't work right. So here's what you should do instead. This is what I found what has worked. And I don't just base it, by the way, off of my experience. We have talked to hundreds of elite planners as well as um, wedding professionals mm -hmm. and professors at universities. Wow. They have all put in their input for this conference. This is uh, not just a Lori Hartwell experience. This is, you know, best of the best have... Uh, that I've worked with over the years have thrown in their input and have um, really taught me what mm -hmm. I should and shouldn't be looking for. Yeah. 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 I love that you mentioned that. So I'm going to transition a little bit from um, per professional to personal, although I know when we become so passionate about what we do, it's our professional is our, it's, it's personal to us, you know, but, <laughs> but into our person, the personal side of Lori Hartwell, um, I was blessed to hear you and Philip, to hear about your husband, Philip, and how really your beautiful marriage that you have, the beautiful relationship that you have as well, and uh, overall, and um, how he even transitioned from corporate and is a, such an integral part of the bridal society. How did that happen? How was that process? Well, I stole him from corporate America. Um, <laughs> I just ripped him right out. Um, so he actually worked uh, very closely with his family um, in a family business selling medical supplies. And they eventually had sold that business. I had been planning weddings this entire time. And and I just told him, listen, you know, I'm, I, I really am looking into this bridal society and I'm, I want to make sure that we're um, doing this the right way. And there's no one else I trust more than you. And mm -hmm. he said, done. I'll make it happen. So um, he, he and I's relationship is very unique and very special in the way that I feel like he has my back 24 hours, seven days a week, um, just as I have his. And, um, you know, we met and married after only knowing each other for three weeks. I don't recommend that. That's not something that people <laughs> do. happen to work for us. And so... Uh, you know, he, he has just always been a big believer of, of me and mm -hmm. he trusts me. I think that's really where it comes from. When you're working with a, with your spouse, um, it, it's about trust. If he didn't trust that I would make good decisions, then he probably would not have supported this the way that he did. Mm -hmm. But he believes in me. He trusts me. He knows that I think everything out. I'm a planner. This is, it's built in. Uh, I know what I want. I have dreams. No one's going to get in the way of my dreams. He knows that no one's going to get in the way of my dreams. So what he does is he figures out a way to build my dreams and support my dreams and make them even bigger and better than I had ever thought possible. So we make a really, really amazing team. Really amazing. We've been married. Uh, it, this year will be 22 years. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So what was that transition like? Because it's got to be tough you go from i mean you've already been in entrepreneurship so you knew about the challenges of running a business and understanding lean means sometimes and sometimes when it's going very well um but leaving that stable 
position beforehand. What were some of those rough points? How did you get through them? What was that, what was that journey like for you? That, and Phil? I'll be honest, scary. It was really scary. Um, we had always depended on his salary to, um, to keep us afloat. And he, uh, you know, he, okay, so let me tell you, Philip and I have never fought about money. We have never fought about, um, you know, taking risks. We've never fought about that. We have a firm belief in, you know, if you want something bad enough, the only way that it's ever going to come to fruition is if you just jump in and make it happen. Mm. And there, there's something to be said for gradually, you know, not just quitting your day job and, and just jumping in, but Philip and I, do things a little bit differently. We actually prefer the jump. We prefer it uh, because it forces us to make a success out of whatever it is that we believe in. And because we feel like if we believe in it, then why not believe in it all the way? Uh, so we just jumped. And yeah, it was scary. Uh, but honestly, we saw we saw the need and the success happen within a month of him mm. uh, quitting his job. We saw it just how the business was just um, taking off and we saw the snowball effect. And that's really what we're, we were wanting. Um, is it was a movement rather than a business. And it's still to this day is a member driven organization rather than a Lori Hartwell driven organization. It's all about the movement, uh, people wanting a change, people wanting um, a supportive environment, people wanting that difference. So to me, the success came from the people who went through the conference rather than through myself or my lovely husband. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome, I love it. I love the story. My husband and I are in business together and um, if he weren't entrepreneurial, I don't know how we would have both been in this process together. Um, so it helps that you're so uniquely um, yoked really and as well as just the trust you have with each other yeah we're, we're matched up pretty perfectly there's no question i i am the luckiest lady on this planet for sure that's awesome that's awesome Lori. all right so we're going to be moving towards the end of our, our talk here but i wanted to find out from you did you have any advice um because there are in our listener group they, we have brand new folks we have folks who've been around for a few years and then we have folks like yourself who've been around for decades doing their craft do you, what is the advice you wish that someone had given you when you first started out in the wedding industry or in the events industry or even as an entrepreneur? Okay. Um, so for those who are brand spanking new, I would say you need to have confidence uh, in yourself because if you don't believe in you, no one else is going to. And you need to have just amazing focus. Know what it is that you want to accomplish, not just tomorrow, not just this month, but five years from today. What is it that you want your business to look like? You really need to have that, that visualization in your head so that you can start marching toward that goal. Um, but that confidence is such a vital part of it. You can't go into any business, you know, shaky or nervous. Now, if you are shaky and nervous, you're going to have to pretend like you're not because no one's going to want to just right. throw a couple of grand at you to plan their wedding. If you are just scared out of your mind that you're going to fail. Mm -hmm. So you have to believe that you're not going to fail. You jump in, get that education, okay, in whatever form. If you're, you know, whether if you want to be a photographer or a DJ, you need to be mentored by someone else or take classes. It is so important. And then never stop learning once you take those classes. It needs to be a constant involvement of, of you know, educating yourself and filling your brain with more knowledge and understanding of, the, of your craft. Right. Um, you know, so belief in yourself, the confidence, um, and getting out there, meeting as many new people as you possibly can. Uh, and just, you have to put a hundred percent effort into being a success. You can't, you can't try to be a success part-time that, that mm -hmm. does not work. You have to, even if you have a full-time job, that means if you want to own your own business eventually and get rid of your full-time job, that means you have to work two full-time jobs in order to make that happen. So there's a lot of people who are like, but that takes a lot of work. Yeah, it does. But if you want something, you go after it and you get it. Yeah. I don't let anything stand in my way. And that's what has um, helped me with my success for existing planners, planners with, you know, three to 30 years of experience. 
uh, my advice to them is to let's stop making assumptions when, when our clients are talking to us and giving us their thoughts and feelings about something, maybe describing uh, the type of event that they're looking for. A lot of times we as planners start to assume things. We, it gets in our head, like we start to have our very own picture. Yeah. I try never to have my own picture. I try to only work off of my clients' pictures. Uh, so I ask for a lot of details. I want them to paint the picture rather than me painting the picture on my own. I feel like that was a huge lesson mm. that I had to learn over the years. Another thing that I've learned too is that you want to make sure that you are giving your clients um, the next steps. Don't assume that your clients know what the next steps are. Many times, 95% of the time, they've never planned a wedding before in their life. And so they don't know what the next steps are. And if you're not explaining that and keeping them in the loop and keeping them in the know, they are going to start feeling anxious uh, and then they're going to start resenting the planner. So I find that those are two of the, the biggest problems that existing planners um, actually have without even, even realizing it because we plan tons of weddings and we think, oh, it's fine. They know, they know the next yeah. step, but they do. Yeah. Well, Lori, I, we probably have three more minutes on our um, talk here, but one of the cornerstones of your success has been your integrity, I believe. Um, would you mind speaking a little bit to that, and if you believe that's one of your cornerstones, and just what are, what have you seen? What do you um, advise folks of in terms of being who they say they are? Yeah, <laughs> and to me, integrity is everything. Um, the person that you see right now is the person I am with everybody. I'm a cut up. Um, I'm a complete goofball, but I'm also very serious when I get down to business. And it's gonna, you know, um, when I say I'm gonna do something, here's what everybody who knows me knows that I'm actually going to follow through with that. There's never been a time where, where I've said I'm going to do something and then I drop the ball. Um, so when, when someone says, oh, well, Lori's going to do it, well, then I know it's going to get done. Don't even worry about it. That's what I wanted for myself. That's what I wanted people to feel um, about me, is that they can trust me. Because I feel like integrity has a lot to do with trust. Integrity also should be the backbone of every single person uh, in business or gosh, not right. just in business, just right. period. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I feel like, I feel like we could all use a little bit more integrity. So, and you're right though, integrity is the cornerstone of the bridal society and who I am as a person, who my husband is. Um, to me, that is the cornerstone. Communication is a, another biggie, but in t if you don't have integrity, it doesn't matter what your communication is or how bad or how good it is. You need to make sure that you are someone that people can trust and um, depend on. Mm -hmm. The whole point of being a planner is, is uh, trust uh, from your clients, from your wedding professionals. Everyone's trusting that the producer of this event, which is the planner, uh, is going to be able to execute everything seamlessly and flawlessly. If people don't trust you because you either maybe you're a hothead or you drop the ball all the time or you just don't keep your promises uh, or you're a flake, you're not going to be a success in, in this industry or, or really anywhere. So integrity to me is one of the most important pieces of being in business, especially this particular industry. Absolutely. Well, thank you, Lori, so much for your time. I, we could talk, obviously, for so much longer as we usually do. <laughs> and I appreciate no you. No problem. <laughs> yeah, so much for being here. Thank you to you and Philip for leading so well. Where can people find you online? Sure. Uh, if you go to thebridalsociety.com, make sure it's the, the word the is in the beginning there. So thebridalsociety.com. We have all the information that you need to find out a little bit more about uh, this particular company, our members. You'll see testimonials. We have, we're um, accredited. We um, have five star reviews only. We have 100% satisfaction rating. Um, we're A plus on BBB. You know, we we really do strive very hard to be um, what our members desperately need in the industry. And so you'll be able to find out all the conference dates. Uh, we have our very first online conference coming up this weekend that I'm going to be teaching, and so I'm really excited about that. And of course we have, you know, we're going to Boca and Orlando and Naples and Chicago and New York and Atlanta and all these other really wonderful places um, in the next six months. And so you'll be able to see all the dates and cities that we're going to be coming to. Beautiful, beautiful. Well, again, thank you, Lori, for being here. Um, I appreciate you and I appreciate your time. I'm looking forward to seeing you again in August if I don't see you before then. 
Yes, and, uh, we'll have to do more. But thank you so much for having me. It was an absolute pleasure. And tell all of the people at ATLWP that I said hello. All right, awesome. We'll do. Thanks so much, Lori. You all, thanks so much for joining us today. We're signing off for I Did It My Way, the podcast that takes you into the journey of leading entrepreneurs and tastemakers. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll reconnect with you soon. Thanks, Lori. Thanks, Bridal Society. Thank you for being a part of the magic with I Did It My Way. Visit us at www.atlantawep.com.